Gallatin County officials say two emergency services levies approved by voters on Tuesday could make a life or death difference. Coming up, we'll find out how. Butte's chief executive race has been narrowed down to two candidates. I'll introduce you to the men seeking election in November. 6.30 on this uh, Thursday, Chet Lehman, Caitlin Corbett, Matt Elwell with you here. And uh, I realized uh, what danger I was when I started choking with socially distanced. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to do CPR from 10 feet away, so yep. I'm glad I was able to recover myself. You have to 10 feet yes, yourself, I'm Chet. <laughs> I was a little nervous there for a second, but glad we didn't have we're to all good. Uh, yeah, on that one. Right. See, whacking me with the broom it was not going to get it done, Caitlin. It wasn't going to work. So, sorry. I'm anyway, sorry. we're back. <laughs> we made it. We're all here alive. Not choking. For now for the moment. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, uh, beautiful morning out there. 50s for most of us. Uh, pretty comfortable conditions overall. Daytime temperatures expected to warm up pretty nicely right now. 54 in Belgrade, 48 degrees in Butte. Our showers right now that we're seeing on radar, a lot of that not hitting the ground, but we are seeing those clouds pretty, uh, pretty much in the middle part of the atmosphere. So there may be a few drops falling, but pretty dry conditions. There may be a few isolated showers trying to develop in the mountains of southwest Montana, Gallatin, uh, Madison Range. Those areas are probably the areas that are most likely to see a few showers for the day. Daytime highs right near the average high or a little above, but we do have cooler weather on the way. We're going to talk more about that, of course, in just a few minutes. Okay, thank you, Matt. 631 now. Two ballot measures got the approval of Gallatin County voters on Tuesday night. Yeah, one was for Gallatin County Search and Rescue, the other for the 911 Center. MTN's Cody Boyer breaks down what this means for both. The passage of both of these levies, one to help 911 dispatch get new and upgraded communication systems, and the other to help search and rescue get three full-time employees, could mean the difference between life or death. I've been doing this 26 years. We've been working on it since before me, I think. For this to actually pass is unbelievable. With 63% of voters saying four, Gallatin County Search and Rescue can now add three full-time employees to its roster. That's a huge statement from the public in support of our volunteers that, that are selfless, that work their butts off. The additional two mills will bring more than $705,000 annually, creating a new division in the Sheriff's Office. You want to talk about an incredible selfless group of people. I could not be more proud of this community. But Gallatin County 911 received a big helping hand of its own. With 54% of votes yes, Mills will now bring in over $2.1 million annually for them. We kind of crossed our fingers and really hoped our community would see the need. 911 Director Tim Martindale feels it. We were processing about 50 to 60,000 calls a year. Now we're looking upwards of 150,000 calls a year. Aging communications, some not working in the rural areas of the county. Martindale calls it the radio project, recreating the entire center's radio structure. They're gonna be able to get to the calls, they're gonna be able to talk to us, they're gonna know what's going on. It's literally the, the difference between life and death, it can be. When we can't communicate then people aren't safe. Now, instead of putting out fires to only come back to them down the road, Martindale says this is a more permanent fix. 15 years with plans to expand the center down the road. 15 years gives us the opportunity to, to take a breath and start planning for the next 15 years after that. In Gallatin County, Cody Boyer, MTN News. And Cody tells us Gallon County already doing that with the 911 plan. A next step, a company from Dallas, Texas coming up in July to start site surveying for the radio upgrades. Then actual construction will start around September. Meantime, voters in Broadwater County have narrowly approved a public safety levy to help fund the Sheriff's Office and Detention Center. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian talked to the Sheriff about what this additional support will mean for law enforcement in Broadwater County. Broadwater County Sheriff Wynn Meehan says he was gratified when he saw the final vote totals on the public safety levy. For us, I think it was a huge stress relief. I know I felt a lot of appreciation to the community for supporting it. I know it's hard to, to do a self-tax upon yourself. I get it, but I was glad we got the support and it passed. In the end, the five-year levy was approved with just over 51% of votes in favor of it. The measure will raise about $704,000 each year. Meehan says without that money, his office would have to begin cutting staff positions. A large portion of the sheriff's budget has come from revenue for holding other county's inmates in the Broadwater County Jail. Much of that revenue will be going away once Lewis and Clark County finishes its own jail expansion project. This stops that. We don't have to use that as a 46% of our revenue for funding public safety. 
Since the levy campaign began, the sheriff's office has lost one patrol deputy, two detention center staff, and one dispatcher. And they haven't refilled those positions because of the uncertainty around funding. Now they're able to begin rehiring for those positions. So basically it's going to take us back to the level of manpower we had when we started this endeavor. Meehan has been talking about the challenges of providing law enforcement services with limited resources for years, particularly after Deputy Mason Moore was killed in 2017. The office has taken other steps to support those services. Meehan says they received a federal grant that will pay part of the cost to add two new deputies serving the southern tip of Broadwater County near Three Forks. I think we're, we're feeling a lot better about our mission and our ability to, to meet our mission and objectives. In Townsend, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. In other local election news, dust is settling from Tuesday's primary election in Silverbow County. MTN's John Amy breaks down the results of the chief executive officer's race. Butte's chief executive Dave Palmer will have to defend his seat against challenger J.P. Gallagher in the general election in November. Gallagher, who is the city's Parks and Recreation Director, received just over 4,600 votes in Tuesday's primary election, while Palmer finished with 3,265 votes. I'm, I'm excited about going forward and, and talking about my vision and my platform and what I can do for Buttes. I'm looking forward to November and you know there was uh, about a 1300 almost 1400 uh, vote difference between JP and myself and uh, there's about 5000 votes that went to the other candidates so I just have to concentrate on those. Gallagher said his administrative experience has given him to be a decisive and effective leader. Government's not an easy position. You got to have a thick skin and you're not always going to have agreement, but you, you need to listen to people, but you need to be able to make decisions. And, and I think that's part of what has helped me with the success I've had so far. Palmer said his record in his first term as chief executive proves he's qualified to stay at his post. Well, I think I have the experience to uh, keep the city moving forward in a positive direction. Uh, there's a lot of good things going on and I want to continue that and we're working on uh, bringing new businesses in on a daily almost. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Again, as a reminder, general election this year, November 3rd. In other headlines this morning, a call Tuesday led Gallatin County Sheriff's deputies to a bizarre situation. Witnesses say a man was seen naked wearing only a straw hat at a local fishing access site. According to court documents, 61-year-old Scott Thompson was arrested shortly after 6 on Tuesday at the Irwin Bridge fishing access area. Witnesses told investigators that they had seen him walking around wearing no clothes. Then they saw him getting into a pickup. Deputies found him wearing a bandana, an unbuttoned shirt and shorts, but Thompson told deputies that he had been wearing a thong earlier. Deputies say Thompson was drunk and has six prior DUI convictions as well as other crimes dating back to 1987. His bond set at $5,000 and his license has been suspended. A parade was held for students of the Ramsey School as they picked up their final report cards. It was a festive atmosphere in the small community just west of Butte as parents and students were greeted by sign-waving teachers and people in costumes while they dropped off books and picked up report cards and other gifts. The event was to say thank you to school staff, parents, and students. All their dedication and hard work, and, and uh, as well as to the parents and the students, you know, kind of adjusting to this distance learning, and, and they did a great job, and, you know, it was, uh, it was tough on everybody, but we, we made the best of it, and I'm really proud of everybody involved. The first through 12th grade school has an enrollment of a little more than 100 students. I'm sure they love that. I just That's super cool. That's a lot of fun. Yep. I, I love all the parades and the ways people are finding to celebrate. That's the, the super creative ways. I think it's awesome. So good stuff. 639, we'll be right back. Up next, if you're worried about what will happen during a police stop, well, now there's an app for that. What it is and how it works is coming up next. And here's what we'll see on CBS This Morning. Good morning. Ahead on CBS this morning, all four police officers involved in George Floyd's death have now been arrested and charged. We're in Minneapolis with the family's reaction. Also, we look at the longstanding allegations of racism against the Minneapolis Police Department. Plus, Congressman John Lewis joins us. The civil rights leader will share his message of hope to the next generation fighting for social equality. 
and we talked to former NFL player Emmanuel Acho about his new video series, Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man, addressing the role white people can play in the Black Lives Matter movement. We'll see you at 7.